Welcome in everybody. My name is All Fun and Games, and I stream every day on Twitch TV, and I also do fun little videos here on YouTube. Well, it's about time. I have played Don't Starve Together for 5,000 plus hours. That's right, 5,000 hours. I have played Don't Starve Together. I have streamed it for almost since, well, since, since 2017, so, you know, four plus years. Um, and let me tell you, this is what I think about it. So if you're new to Don't Starve Together, if you just got the game or if you're thinking about getting the game, this is probably one of the most elaborate survival games out there. You look at a game like this and you might say, hmm, well, it's, you know, a small game. It doesn't look like it could have a lot of stuff. But let me tell you, this game packs a punch. It, there's a reason why when you Google the best Don't Star the best survival game on Steam, Don't Starve Together is one of the ones that pops up. But if if I remember, it is the number one survival game on Steam. There's a reason for this. Don't Starve Together brings you into the constant, aka into the game, and it challenges you instantly. If you're a newcomer to the game and you have nobody to help you or have nobody to guide you, generally speaking, most people reach out just to YouTube in order to survive more than 10 days. And some people decide that they want to do them by themselves without any help from any third-party resources, and that's okay as well. Honestly, no matter how you play Don't Starve Together, you're going to end up in a game, in a world that intrigues you in multiple different avenues. Whether it's choosing a character that challenges you right away or choosing a character that kind of helps you more, you're also being challenged by the world consistently as you go along. The beauty about Don't Starve Together is not necessarily just about how beautiful the game is, but also how the game takes you into the world and puts you into scenarios where you have to fight your way through just to survive past day one. Or you might even struggle that you don't even know how to cook something necessarily. Or you have to learn that cooking the wrong thing can end up causing it to be bad. Or if you wait too long, your food is going to spoil. There's multiple different ways that Don't Starve Together decides to challenge you challenge you and that's what makes this game so unique now i played this game like i said for over 5,000 hours it does not make me amazing or a pro at the game i can tell you right now there are a lot better people out there that play don't Starve together better than me but of course i have a little bit of information under the under my belt and that's what i'm willing to share with you so let's go through the transition period you are just getting don't Starve together you're just installing the game and you're ready to find out what I think about it or what somebody who has a little bit of experience that don't serve together. It's an amazing game. Enjoy the ride. Don't feel bad for dying and don't starve together. Let me highlight that. Do not feel bad for dying and don't starve together. People make it out to seem like, oh, you know, is am I a noob for dying? No, the game is meant for you to die. The way that you the way that you die in the game, then you pick yourself back up and you get past that day. Imagine yourself playing a game where you get to day one and you die. You get to day three and now you die. Eventually you make your day all the way to like day 30 and you're still surviving. That's what makes this game so amazing. Anybody that assumes that because I've died 500 times, you know, I'm not that good at the game. I can never triumph. I can never make it. You just got to try, try again. And that's why this game is so awesome. I can tell you right now, I don't even want to look at how many times I've died in Don't Starve Together. It's well over 10,000. And I'm telling the truth. It's I've died a lot in Don't Starve Together. And I'm proud of it. Because for that, I've learned. I've learned how to play the game. I've learned how to get different characters under my belt. I've learned how to do different things. I've learned how to have fun in certain ways. And that's what the game is really there for. It's about taking control and playing different avenues. Whether you want to play, like I said, a character that challenges you right away or a character that that might uh, help you out. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. So if you're thinking about getting Don't Starve Together, you're considering it, but you're looking to find out a little bit of information of what it has to offer. It has everything to offer. It's challenging, it's fun, lots of people have it. Most people have it because their friends give them the game. Now, I'll talk about that in a second. If you have Don't Starve Together, you're thinking about purchasing it, you get a free copy to give to somebody. So that's the beauty about this game. It welcomes people in that might not have a chance to buy the game or own the game or might not even want the game. And that's the thing is that you buy the game and they say, hey, look, you, you know, Joe, I want you to have this copy and I want you to play with me and consider the fact that this game could be really fun together. Well, they get a free copy. Of course, somebody they get something free most likely is going to give it a try. And you never know. Sometimes I hear stories of I bought the game or somebody bought the game and they gift me a copy. They never played anymore. And I play it all the time. And I hear that all the time. And that's what makes this that's what makes Clay unique. I shouldn't even say the game because Clay has took that initiative to say, look, we're willing to buy one, get one, free this game by 
promoting it to people that might not actually want to play the game or might not have ever heard it. Well, now they have a free copy that is given to them on Steam by their friends. And that's also something that you have to take into consideration. Clay is one of the best I'm telling you the best developers out there. They're with your com they're with their community day in and day out. They're always on the forums answering questions and they're always taking feedback from the community. Don't Starve Together is one of the best communities that I've ever been a part of and I'm telling you they deserve A++++ across all of their wherever they have their forums or whatever because honestly it's just they're the number one company that I've ever dealt with. Okay, so We've commented on the fact that I'm praising Don't Strive Together consistently. And of course, this video is not sponsored by them or anything. It's just my personal opinion after playing hours and hours and hours. So if you want a game that's challenging, a game that's fun, a game that has the, one of the best artworks that you can ever get, and a game that really just offers a ton of replayability, go ahead and get yourself Don't Starve Together. Now, of course, I played, like I said, I played a lot of hours into Don't Starve Together. Do I eventually need to take a break from the game? Of course. As anything out there, there's always times where you're going to step away and say, okay, it's time to play something different. And then you always find your way back into the world of Don't Starve Together. And that's how it is for me. Right now, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a step back playing some other games, but as soon as I step back into Don't Starve Together, I feel that thrive to get back in there and survive and try different things. And that is what I'm about to talk about right now. When you get into Don't Starve Together and you click on character selection or you click on item collection, you're able to see the multiple different characters that you can play. Now, different than games like Minecraft and Terraria, each character is almost like a game itself. You take these characters and they each have their own stats, their own perks, their own downfalls, their own pros and cons, and just the list goes on of what they can offer. So you might go into the game and you have 500 hours playing and all you play is Wilson. Now you say to yourself, okay, it's time to move on. Let me play as Wolfgang. It's not as easy as it sounds. You don't just move over to another character and boom, you know everything and boom, everything's the exact same. That's why this is so interesting. That's why Don't Serve Together continues to give hours and hours and hours to people's Steam list because you're just consistently trying to get better at a different character. I'll give you an example. I used to play Weber forever. When As soon as I played Don't Serve Together, I had somebody in my chat saying, play Weber, he's amazing. And I did. I played Weber for thousands of hours. Eventually, I said, okay, it's time for me to play somebody different. And I started migrating over to other characters. I recently just got really good at Wanda, and then I decided, hey, enough is enough. I want to switch over to Wendy, who I never really played that much. And then I switch over to Woody, and now Woody's kind of my main focus. And of course, I shift between different characters. A while ago, I decided, hey, I'm going to try playing as Warly. Well, sure enough, I didn't do a good job at it, and I died consistently, and I always had issues because he requires so such specific things in order to survive. And that's what makes this game so unique. And that's why I think... As you play this game and as you get further and further and down the road, you realize that a game that might look so small to you and might say, hmm, well, it doesn't look like it offers a lot compared to other games. It actually offers a ton. Don't Starve Together's world, aka the constant, when you load in, of course, you can see it in one small map. It's not like Minecraft where you go on for years and years and years and you can explore as much as you want. Everything's right in front of you and you can essentially explore the entire map. But the things that happen in there as time goes on, of course, challenge you um, extensively. And that's kind of what makes the game, like I said, so unique as well. Now, one thing that I think this game offers the most is mods. If you get it to the chance of going and looking for mods, there's endless amazing mods out there and mod makers. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why this game is so good because all these amazing mod makers are out there busting their butts to make it so extra good <laughs> compared to how it is already the game is already amazing now you have these modders making the game good in a different way or specific ways that people like to to play by and just that alone makes it that much better and of course some people prefer not to use mods i'm the i'm the opposite i love mods i think mods make every game amazing better than they already are and you know, that's just my opinion. So that, I just want to include that because I feel like a lot of times mods don't really get the, sh the spotlight that they, they deserve. So like I said, this game offers multiple different playability. Challenging, yes. Is it fun to play with friends? Of course. Can you play it solo? Sure, you can challenge yourself solo. Is it meant to play to with friends? I think it is. There is Don't Starve and then there's Don't Starve Together. I mean, there's a reason why the word together is in the game. It's, it's, of course, you can challenge yourself by playing by yourself. And a lot of people don't like to play games like this with other people because they enjoy the free 
Lance are being able to go out there and do whatever they want without risking somebody coming into their world and taking what they've worked so hard on. And I understand that as well. So there's, you know, the game is yours. You can play with it what you will. But if you are looking to play Don't Serve Together, I highly re recommend it. The game goes on sale all the time. You can generally get it for very inexpensive. I mean, most of the time, the game's around $12 as it is. I mean, Canadian as far as I know. And you get a free copy to give to a friend. So if you have somebody else that wants it, say, look, you give me $6, I'll buy the game. You split it or whatever the cost might be. And you get yourself a copy and you give the other copy to a friend. And for that, I think it's probably one of the number one games that have ever played survival games. And I really do think that Clay deserves eventually, hopefully one, one day down the road, some sort of Steam award <laughs> because, you know, they have really outdone themselves and they continue to release updates all the time that is another unique thing about don't starve together we really take it for granted how often they really update the game the game is updated as far as i know a, an average about them every month and a half now that alone is something that i don't believe a lot of other developers do and for that i mean they definitely deserve a lot of praise so if you own the game and you're just here to watch the video about what i personally believe about the game i think it's awesome i think it's one of the best now Let's talk about how the game ends up near the end. So I've obviously played 5,000 hours of it. How do I feel after playing that? I feel that I still have a lot to learn. I feel, I feel like I've never mastered Maxwell. I've never mastered uh, Wirt. I never mastered Wormwood. And of course, I've never mastered Whirly. And I've barely touched Walter. Walter is like one of the characters that I've actually probably never played. I, I might have played Walter maybe a total of two hours. Um, probably more than that. But essentially, like... There's all these other characters that I still haven't tried. So for me to say I am done and over with Don't Starve Together and I've done everything that there is, of course not. I don't think there is ever going to be a case for anybody to say that because there's multiple different challenges that you can do and ways that you can change the world as well. So you can challenge yourself to multiple different avenues and don't starve. So, you know, like I said, there's times where you might want to take a break and come back to it, but you always get that feeling that you want to come back to Don't Starve Together. So for this, I love Don't Starve Together. I'm going to continue down the road of always playing don't serve together but i just wanted to tell you that if you're looking to get the game or if you're just installing the game give yourself a chance because as soon as you get past that barrier of survival and don't serve together you unlock a plethora of just fun and enjoyment and the number one thing that people always say to me is i can never find people to play don't serve together with and that's why I always tell anybody, anytime I'm playing Don't Starve Together or any game for that matter, you're always welcome to join me and you can join my Discord and there's multiple people that are looking to play together. And that's, in my opinion, the easiest way to get around. If you can look on people for Twitch that are looking to play together, look on people um, on the clay forums that are looking to play together. There's so many people out there that are looking to play together. And like I said, one of the best communities that I've ever encountered with from my time streaming and my my time gaming at least um so yeah give the game a shot i think you're gonna really enjoy it if you already own the game keep going at it never mind how many times you've died that's how you learn that's how you get better and that's how you enjoy the game and challenge yourself because this game could really challenge you but at the very end of the day it's all about just having fun so i hope you enjoyed this video let me know down in the let me know in the comments how long you've been playing don't start together if you decide that you're just thinking about getting it and maybe this video pushed you over the edge and just made you want to get the game <laughs> but i truly am telling you from me experiencing this game for as many hours as i have i have no bad things to say about it other than the fact that I'm just excited about multiple new things that they're coming to that is coming to don't start together and i hope that you know we see multiple different things that you know, are new in the upcoming updates that will make everybody else that might say, hey, I need to take a break from DSD, jump back in the game. And I think they will. I think Clay is going down that path. They've looked and said, okay, look, we've done everything else we can. And now they're adding all these cool new things to Don't Starve Together to add new abilities and new challenges and new animations. So you're, if you're just looking to get the game now, it's a prime time to get it because Clay is putting all their efforts into Don't Starve Together. Um, it's their main game. So Give it a shot. I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you in the next video.